why we need classification of anemia and try to simplify it for easy understanding. Have you ever thought why we need to take so much of trouble to classify anemia? Because it is useful in determining what is going on in the body and therefore help to detect the underlying conditions. For example, if peripheral blood smear reveals small blood cells and low hemoglobin content, then the physician would get indication that this patient might be suffering with iron deficiency anemia and would plan an appropriate treatment. Similarly, if tests reveal large RBC along with normal hemoglobin content, then physician might suspect a deficiency of vitamin B12 or folic acid as underlying conditions. From above, we know why classification of anemia is so important. Now let's talk about the classification of anemia. There are many classification of anemia. We will follow based on underlying mechanism, based on morphologic characteristics, which include red cell size and volume, degree of hemoglobinization, based on underlying mechanism, which include blood loss, hemolysis, decreased red cell production. In blood loss, there are acute blood loss and chronic blood loss. Acute blood loss is mainly caused by trauma and chronic blood loss mainly caused by gastrointestinal tract lesions, gynecologic disturbances. Hemolysis, there are intrinsic hemolytic anemia, extrinsic hemolytic anemia. Intrinsic hemolytic anemia include inherited disorder, acquired disorder, whereas extrinsic hemolytic anemia include immune-mediated, non-immune-mediated. Let us discuss briefly about intrinsic hemolytic anemia, which means defect within RBC, inherited disorders, cell membrane defects, hereditary spherocytosis, hereditary elliptocytosis, enzyme deficiencies, G6PD deficiency, glutathione synthetase deficiency, pyruvate kinase deficiency, hemoglobin synthesis defects, thalassemia syndromes, sickle cell disease. Acquired disorder in which person born with normal genetic material to produce normal RBC but generate mutation in bone marrow or erythropoietic system later on. Paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea. Extrinsic hemolytic anemia. Immune mediated. ISO antibodies. ABO incompatibility. RH incompatibility. Auto antibodies. Idiopathic. Malignancy, drug induced, non immune mediated, mechanical causes which include disseminated intravascular coagulation, hemolytic uremic syndrome, thrombotic thrombocytopenia, infections of red cells, malaria, toxic injury, snake venom, clostridial sepsis, lead poisoning, membrane lipid abnormalities, orbital lipoproteinemic, splenic sequestration, hypersplenism. Decreased red cell production, inherited genetic defects, Fanconi anemia, thalassemia syndrome, nutritional deficiencies, B12 and folate deficiency anemia, iron deficiency anemia, erythropoietin deficiencies, renal failure, immune mediated injury of progenitors, aplastic anemia, primary hematopoietic neoplasms, acute leukemia, infection of red cell progenitors, parvovirus B19 infections. Next, based on morphologic characteristics, red cell size and volume, normocytic, microcytic, macrocytic, normocytic means normal size, microcytic means small size, macrocytic means large size. In peripheral blood smears, when we observe from microscope, red cells are normal size and normochromic. In general, microcytic hypochromic anemias are caused by disorders of hemoglobin synthesis, most often iron deficiency, and red cells are small and pale. In megaloblastic anemia, red cells are macrocytic and oval, may be normochromic or may also appear hyperchromic. Degree of hemoglobinization, hemoglobin content, reflect in color of red cells, normochromic, hypochromic, hyperchromic.